Well, welcome back to another Wayno's Photos video. And I've been lurking in the comments, so I've been watching what you've been writing. And it's good old Big Brother is watching. Well, anyway, I found some little comments about through axles and how people think that uh, disc brakes and through axles are making their frames and their wheels and the combination a little bit stiffer. So let's just have a look at that and let's just have a look at if that could be true or not. Well, through axles is a technology that's come with disc brake bikes and a lot of people put the actual stiffness or the feel of the bike down to having this through axle and, and it's, it's a pretty common comment that people make that through axles feel stiffer on their bike. Now, the thing we need to consider here is, is the combination of flex coming from the ground to your handlebars. There's quite a few components in that uh, configuration. So you have your handlebars, you have the actual headset and you actually have the two members of the top tube and the bottom tube which are could allow movement around your headset and then you actually have the fork then you have the through axle or the quick release axle on a rim bike and then you actually have the wheel now the wheel also is spoke differently on a disc brake bike you have your cross spoking and you have more spokes but on a rim bike you have radial spoking and you have less spokes so you need to consider all of these components when you're talking about does it feel stiffer or not because Whatever's the weakest link or the flexiest part will flex the most first. And the things that have the stiffer, more stiffer parts will flex last. Now, you know, this, this takes a lot of logic. So what we really want to look at is what components from the actual ground up through the wheel and the fork and the headset to the handlebars to your hands actually are going to flex the most first. Well, I think people really know the difference in design between a quick release axle and a through axle. One has a cam design that applies force and pressure to clamp the axle between the forks. And the other one uses a screw fed to actually screw through both sides and actually keep the axle in place. So they're the two designs. So what we're going to do now is I've actually done a little bit of an experiment and we're actually going to have a look at the different angles. We're going to be looking from the front of the bike and the top of the bike. And I'm actually going to apply some force at the, at the ground point on the rim. And let's just see what happens. Well, looking at this plane from the ground up to the handlebars, you can see the forks are unbraced. So we're just going to put this line through the center axle. Now, if I applied force to the end, because the forks are not braced, there's probably quite a lot of flex that comes across those two free unsuspended forks. And this is how a caliper would work. And this is why I believe a through axle has been used. It's partially to transfer some of that rotating force across the axle to the other fork to prevent or reduce mostly that twisting action. Okay, in this plane, it'll be like if we're riding along going around a corner. So this would be the actual force applied if it felt stiffer or not, if you had through axles. Now you can see the force is being applied up and down the fork, not at right angles to the fork so it would flex more. So in this configuration, we may have the actual spokes flexing or we may actually have the forks flexing or even the handlebars or the headset. Okay, well here I am holding the handlebars and applying force to the end of the wheel as you would if you're riding around a corner. But what I found was that most of the flex was happening in the headset and the handlebars. So I thought, mm, this is no good. I wanted to see what was happening in the fork and the wheel. So I changed my experiment by holding the headset. Okay, holding the actual headset now, and I'm applying force to the top of the wheel. Now, the actual headset is turning a little bit, but uh, it does appear to me that uh, you can see the actual wheel and the spokes flexing to some degree. Well, in conclusion, you can see that I actually performed two tests applying the force. The first test I did just holding the handlebars. And the problem with that test is I was getting quite a lot of flex through the headset and the handlebars, and it wasn't really applying it to the wheel or the forks. So what I did is to try and see what would happen at the wheel and the fork area, I grabbed the top of the fork headset, and then I applied the force again. Now, with the first test, you can actually see that most of the flexing is done in the headset and the handlebars. But in the second test, when I eliminated, eliminated those components, 
the actual motion of the fleck was actually in the wheel with the spokes. And this makes a lot of sense because wheels are actually designed to have flicks in them. And this is so the wheel, when you actually lean in the bike over, actually maintains the tire in contact with the ground. It's, it's like a, a, a very crude and small form of suspension. Now, this is what I expected and why I don't really believe that the through axle is actually making the bike stiffer. The reason that I would put it down to is that you have a wheel that's built in a stronger way because it's built to transfer the loading from the disc from the center hub to the actual outer rim so that you have more spoking and you have cross spoking. And the other factor is, is that the forks would probably be made more rigid as well because it has to cope with the braking force of the caliper and the disc at the end of the fork. So even though we may put it down to the through axle making the front end or the bike feel stiffer, I actually think it's got to do with the different wheel design and the different forks that they're doing to make the disc brake bikes. Well guys, leave your comments down below and what do you think about that? Because um, you've got to consider there's a number of component changes here. It's not like they just took out the quick axle and they put like a through axle in. We have a different type of spoking, different type of wheel, and we have different type of fork construction as well. So anyway, that's where I'm going to leave it. That's my view on the topic. So get your comments down below and tell me what you think or what your experiences are. And we can have a bit of a chin wag in the comment section. That's where I'm going to leave it. And I'll see you next vid. Cheers.